I got to start by the fact that the Goldbergs has been going for a decade, which is an amazing accomplishment for any TV series. What's it been like part, you know, being part of this journey for that long? It's really wild because it really doesn't feel like a decade <laughs> at all. Um, but I do, I have this year, especially been walking around trying to like take it all in because I don't think I ever would have thought if you told me 10 years ago that we'd be going this long. I just don't think I would have believed it because it's so rare to see nowadays with, with shows in general. Um, so we're just really grateful and soaking it in as much as we can. I I remember when the show premiered, uh, you and, and the other two young actors were in Toronto for this chat. And I remember sitting there going, wow, they are like, there was so much energy to you three. And I mean, this whole cast has been amazing. Has it been a little bit like, I mean, growing up together in a way? Because 10 years, I mean, that's unprecedented for a young cast, especially. Yeah. Well, first of all, I absolutely loved that trip that we took to Toronto. I have, I don't think I've been able to go back since, but I have talked about that trip, even though it was such a short one. Troy and I had so much fun. Sean did too. Um, I mean, but he was a minor, so I feel like he had only like <laughs> so many things he could go enjoy. Um, but it, that was such a fun trip. And it is like growing up together. I mean, for Sean, literally, he started this when he was 12 or 13 years old. And now he's 22, 23 almost that um, Troy and I were 19. And essentially it, our entire twenties was this show, um, which is like amazing. And at the same time, a little bizarre because there's people, not only the other cast, but a lot of the crew has stayed since the beginning. And so it is like a family. Um, and yeah, it's, I mean, it's hard to describe, like you just end up bonding with each other and you end up seeing each other sometimes more often than your family at home. So we're we're all very close and very appreciative that we have had this many years to be able to just hang out and laugh together. What do you think of Erica now playing her versus maybe when you started uh, as your obviously she's changed a lot. So what's what's your idea of her now? Yeah, I mean, I think it's really bizarre because I feel like I have grown up alongside Erica and, and there's been a lot of things in her life that have paralleled my own. Um, that is, you know, I think that's just how they say what art imitates life or life imitates art. I forget which direction it is, but for me, it kind of goes both ways. <laughs> and um, I feel like I'm happy where Erica is headed. I don't think that there's ever a point where she's now grown and mature, even as a new mom this season, um, that she's just learned it all. I think I know from my own experience that she still has so much more to, to learn. Um, but I've been really enjoying seeing the last few years for her and, and you know, coming into her own. Hmm. Well, in terms of, you know, how you spend your time, you know, obviously music takes up a big part of your life and then you've got the show. So where does that balance come in? Do you, are you sometimes working on music while you're working on the show? Do they kind of exist separately or what is that like? That has been the hardest juggle of my life has been trying to give 150% to both because you just can't. Um, mm -hmm. As much as I have fought for that to not be true, that is just the case. Um, and so I try to squeeze in music stuff whenever I can, but the minute that we get hiatus between seasons is when I go full force into music and um, just take up all the time that I have to be able to see, you know, if I can create songs, put new songs out, um, perform wherever I can. So it's very hard for the two to exist at the same time, but I love them both so much that I just try to find the time where I can. And whenever the time comes that the Goldbergs is like done officially, I think I'm going to try to focus at least a good two years on just making it work and giving music the same level of attention um, and energy that I've given the Goldbergs. Are you ever working through the show and get this idea for something and then you've got to try and hold on to it so you can get to some paper or you know sit yes. down to write it down? <laughs> Actually, yes. I try to keep my phone somewhat nearby without it being like distracting and on set in case uh, lightning strikes and I just need to write it down. Um, that does happen to me quite a bit, it, whether it's on set or driving in the car or, you know, just 
whenever it happens. So yeah, that's, that's a big thing of mine. <laughs> I know as well that you've taken inspiration from a lot of sources in terms of your musical style. Uh, what, what are your biggest inspirations? What, what today affects you the most in terms of sitting down to record? Oh, that's so hard because I, I feel very influenced by so many different kinds of genres that, um, you know, to some, it may come off very confusing. Like how do you listen to all those things and how does that all come into play? And that's been a difficult new journey for me in this process that I'm now writing an EP and trying to go back to my roots and combining those elements that I I grew up listening to as different as they are. So growing up, it was really soulful vocal singers like Brian McKnight, Whitney Houston. I loved Celine Dion. Um, But then as I got into high school, it was more like indie singer songwriters, like Sarah Bareilles is one of my favorite songwriters of all time. And then I also just really love pop music. And I'm constantly listening to like new and upcoming pop artists and um, singer songwriters in general, like one songwriter I'm obsessed with is JP Sachs. He just is so lyrically brilliant and his music sonically is so simple, but um, I just love it. So it's like trying to find elements of each artist that I I love and trying to incorporate that into like who I am as an artist and telling my own story has been a journey. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of a mixed bag. <laughs> What do you like? Are, do you go out to a lot of music in LA? Like, what do you, what kind of shows are you seeing in LA? Um, I am trying to challenge myself this year to go to more shows because I think I'm really bad about missing when, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I didn't know they were in town. And so I use that Bands in Town app and website to be able to right. like follow artists. Yeah. And thankfully, it connects to your Spotify. So if I'm not like, searching for this one artist it knows like hey you listen to this person a lot and they're coming in town so for example i just bought tickets to rustin kelly i don't know if you know who that is but yeah I'm yeah that's with rustin kelly so i got tickets for his show um who else do i know is coming in town i feel really bad but um greg and i are getting married my fiance and i are getting married this year and i was going to surprise him with tickets to the uh death cab for cutie show yeah but- Falls on our wedding weekend. So that's going to be a no go for him. <laughs> Sorry, Greg. Um, but yeah, so I'm trying to be better about keeping an eye on things and going to more shows. Definitely to some of my friends, like Ali and AJ, I'm one of their biggest fans and I love getting to support my friends. So I got to see their show. They opened for Ben Platt at the Hollywood Bowl this last year. Um, so just wherever I can, you know, big scale, little scale, doesn't matter. Um, I also love hotel cafe and like indie shows that of up and coming artists. So kind of whatever I can get. That's cool. Well, I love asking this question because I've heard so many different answers, but when you're, you know, if you think of creating music, performing music, or like, you know, in terms of like writing, recording or performing, what's your favorite? Is there one that stands out for you? Oh man, writing, recording, and performing. I I really love the writing process. Um, it is a challenge at times, but I it's just very therapeutic. It's like a puzzle for me. It's trying to get a combination of like that concept that I really want to tell the story, making it relatable to other people, but fitting in with the right sonic vibe. And it it is just like getting to do a puzzle. And so for me, that's a part of it I really enjoy. I do love performing. It's been a long time, I feel like, since I've been on stage, but um, I'm excited and looking forward to to doing that again once this new wave of music is out. Well, one other thing I'm curious about is, do you have a hope for a future where maybe you can combine both more, where you're 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 singing and acting in in the same project? I mean, that would be amazing. I got very lucky that the Goldbergs allowed for me to do that for quite a few years where I could do a little bit of both. Now, granted, it was often 80s covers, which can be fun at times. And other times I'm like, oh, OK. Uh, but I, that would be really cool to be able to do both. And I think this last summer I got to do my first like musical. So I was a part of the Kinky Boots musical at the Hollywood Bowl. And that was such an amazing experience that... I'm trying to like keep an eye out for more projects where I could do both. Um, 
whatever that may look like. And, and it, that community is so incredible and it's its own world outside of like acting in television that I have so much respect for the artists that I got to work alongside in that process. And I know it's not easy to just like pop in and be in a musical. So I just hope that I get the opportunity to do something like that again. Well, the last thing I'll ask you is what what's coming next for you that we can watch for? Is there something outside of the Goldbergs that we can we can keep an eye out for? As far as a film or television project, not yet, um, but who knows? Uh, but I have been really focusing on trying to get this next EP out. Um, this year it will happen. I'm always really bad about saying that it's going to happen earlier than it ever does. So I'm just leaving it open to in 2023 sometime. There will be new music that is a different sound I haven't really done before. Um, and then also just on my own time, I'm going to really try to focus on producing my own scripted content. Um, oh, along very with my cool. fiance and some of my friends, just such a group of talented people that I think um, not letting like the industry boundaries feel like we they can, you know, stop us from creating. So that's just kind of going to be my challenge this year. Well, I am going to ask you one last thing quickly. What, how does social media play into this for you? Do you do you find it helps? Is it? Uh, I can't remember. I, 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 are you on TikTok too, or is it mainly Instagram? Or what's your what's your angle? I am. So I started. I mean, I have a TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that jazz. I focused for a long time a lot on Instagram, and it just is soul sucking, and so I kind of stopped posting unless I just really have something I feel like posting um trying to allow that pressure off of me a little bit but it is important at the same time when you are an artist like that is just a part of it um but TikTok I had a lot of fun with during the pandemic and it carried on you know these last couple of years and I I gained my biggest social following through TikTok I think mm. because that pressure's off a little bit that Instagram provides and I can just kind of be myself unapologetically. Um, so I, I really love that platform so much, but I haven't been posting a ton. So I need to kind of get back in that, but I'm trying to, my fiance says something that's great. He's like, create more than you consume. And I am very guilty of doing the opposite of that. So I need to start creating more. Aren't we all? Yeah. <laughs> I do love, though, the musical side of TikTok, I think, is a great thing because for actors and musicians, I think it gives such a great platform to do something that maybe the fans are not going to see anywhere else. Oh, yeah. And the success stories that have come out of TikTok for other mm -hmm. musicians, even that I know, it's honestly, these stories are unbelievable. And it's just exciting because it is a platform for people that it as much as it feels like the algorithm carries itself to lends itself to more people than mm. for certain people. I do think that to a degree, it is an even playing field and it's just what you bring to the table. Um, it's like opportunity meeting, you know, hard work mm. and all that. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. It's great talking to you.